Oh, baby, I come bearing good news. Looks like GPUs are back on the menu, boys. <laughs> uh, and what better thing to do than to suggest some builds? Because come on, guys, for so long it's been buy a pre-built, do this, do that, to get around all these problems that we've been having with the GPU shortage. It's all coming to an end, which makes it very exciting. I'm going to go through four builds today that you can build today, at least in the UK, for a reasonable budget. And we're going to go for budget, mid-range and high-end, so you're all covered. And this is all down in the uh, chapters on the videos. So you can go in between, find whichever kind of budget category that you are in. So, as I said, four builds, different price points. We're even going to be showing you where to get all the parts and everything. So stick around and see you on the other side of the transition for the lists. ba bam. All right, guys, just a quick message before we start the uh, the actual builds themselves. Um, JCPCCustoms.com, obviously a long-time supporter of the Concept Soup channel, does actually have some graphics cards in stock. So if you go to the website, go to graphics cards, there's four available. I think there's only one in stock of each, so they're just one-offs tend to be a little bit cheaper than you can find at most retailers but not by a huge margin um, so if you can wait a bit longer obviously the prices will probably be going down across the board but today these are some pretty competitive pricing but in the list we're doing today I have not used any JCPC customs pricing I've used standard pricing from all the other retailers all right so that's just an FYI on with the video bye bye So here's our first offering, £600, sort of what I'd call an entry level build. Like really anything below this, you're going to be struggling a little bit. Sticking around £600, pretty close to that. So, you know, we're happy, happy days there. We don't have any Windows keys included in the price, but if you look in the description, you get one for about 15 quid. But you're not, you don't care about that. You care about the build. So we've gone for a 12100F strategy with a 6500XT. And there's some good reasons for that, because with 12th gen, you're going to be getting PCIe Generation 4, which is pretty much essential for using a 6500 XT graphics card. This kind of PC, great for 1080p gaming, you know, you're going to struggle a bit when you're starting to get into the 1440p. But most people like those esports games like Apex Legends, Fortnite, these kind of things. This system is more than enough for that, especially at 1080p resolution. In fact, even in Fortnite, you might be able to push a bit of 1440p if you like as well. But let's go through the parts. So 12100F Intel, this is the i3 part. Don't get put off by the fact that this is an i3, okay? So, you know, traditionally i3s get bashed a little bit. Oh, you've only got an i3, but you know, nowadays these i3s are actually pretty nice. So four core, eight thread, which is great for that sort of entry to mid-level experience gaming. Decent clock speed as well. The 3.3 you see here is actually just the base speed. It goes well over four gigahertz in real life. 12th gen, meaning you get PCI Generation 4. So it really is, there's not really anything in this budget category that's going to beat a 12100F. And it really does get very close to some of those higher-end counterparts, but costing significantly less. Motherboard, we have the B660M DS3H-AX. Uh, this is a gigabyte motherboard. It's basically it's a no-frills motherboard, but it's not one of those really cheap, nasty ones. So it is actually fairly decent. Uh, it will easily handle this 12100F. You could even put something like a 12600K in here if you really wanted to. Um, but, you know, that's a choice for yourself. You've got AX built in, which means it's got nice fast Wi-Fi. And I believe the Gigabyte boards come with an extendable antenna, which gives you better Wi-Fi signal. Memory-wise, we've got some Corsair Vengeance LPX 16 gig, two lots of eight, DDR4 3600. Pretty nice RAM. I mean, really, what you want to do when you're looking for RAM is just find any 3600 speed RAM two lots of eight it doesn't really matter what the brand is because they all use you know the same array of chips most of the time so you'd be happy with that even some ddr4 3200 cl16 you're not really going to be noticing the difference on this build anyway so if you can get that at a decent price a further saving for you storage wise 500 gigs is pretty nice for an entry level system so we've got the western digital sn 570 NVMe M2 ssd which means you've got nice nippy windows experience you're also going to load your games up nice and quick if you've got a lot of games, you might want a bigger version of the drive, you can do that. That's no problem at all. The good thing about the Western Digital is it's just a well-respected brand, and I've found that I don't think I've ever had a Western Digital drive fail on me, at least um, an SSD, so you're going to be having happy days. But equally, if you find an NVMe of a solid, um, sort of solid quality like this, and it's a similar price or cheaper, that's also fine. That's also fine. Video card. RX 6500 XT, this is the MSI Mech version, it's the cheapest version of this graphics card to keep it in budget. Now 170 quid, 
actually not a bad deal. This is pretty much what they should cost, really. They should really be around the 150 mark, 150 to 170 mark. So this is actually a fine price. You know, when they're up above £200, then you're thinking this is a little bit silly for this level of performance, but um, I actually don't mind the 6500 XT in the right setup. Case-wise, so the common theme that you're going to find over a lot of these builds is that we're going for a nice case and a nice power supply because it allows you to build the machine up over time. So we've gone for a Fantex P400A DRGB. So it comes with three RGB fans in the front, lovely mesh on the front, good standard mid-tower size, which means you're going to fit pretty much any kind of components in it that you want. It's a case that you can grow with. So, you know, we're not buying like a micro ATX case and we're not trying to cram everything in to try and keep that price super low. We're going for a case that's going to allow us to go into the future and keep putting things in and out of the case without having to change it. And a similar theme with the power supply, we have the Cooler Master MW Bronze V2, 750 watt power supply. Hard to beat this in terms of price to performance. Do you need 750 watts for this kind of machine? No, no you don't. But the good thing about having this is that it's reasonably priced, pretty much the same price as you know other brands that are offering less and you get to put in some higher end components in the future. So you're thinking ahead, you're being smart, you're picking components that are gonna be easily swappable and changeable over time. Now obviously Windows isn't included, but that's something you can also add from the link in our description as well. And I think that'll make a really nice 600 pound build. And as you can see, all the stuff here, it's all in stock at you know all the standard uh, UK retailers. The power supply, that is available at scan for 45 quid um, plus the five pound shipping. So that's where I got this 50 pound from. Unfortunately, PC Power Picker doesn't pick up everything that's out there. So that's why it's important to do a bit of research yourself as well. So I think that'll make a really awesome 600 pound build. So £800 is the next build here, and we're taking a little bit of a slightly different tangent with this one. This is for people that have gone, yeah, I want to stick sort of within a sensible budget, but I want something a little bit nicer than we've got with that i3 build. Um, and for spending that little bit of extra money, you do get quite a nice return for that. So you'll notice that a lot of the components are very similar in this one. So same power supply, same case, same RAM, right? Same SSD, because these parts, they're, they're cosmopolitan. They will work across all the builds and they're all really high quality and going to last. The differences here is CPU wise, we're going for an AMD platform with the new 5600 six core processor, which gives you a little bit of extra longevity. You've got a couple of extra cores there if you want to do a bit of Discord, a bit of streaming and that kind of thing. Um, we've also got an aftermarket CPU cooler here. So this is the Arctic Freezer 34 eSports. You know, for that extra little bit of money, you do get a nice quiet running system. And I do really like these Arctic coolers. I think they provide fantastic performance for the money that you're paying. Motherboard wise, now it's a bit of a steal here on this. Um, the B550 Gaming XV2, full ATX size, looks fairly decent. Power delivery is okay, fine. Even for a Ryzen 7, this would be fine. Really good deal on it. Curries with this one. That's why it's in white and not um, linked there. Um, and you can get it for about £86, but there's a £5 off code, which we'll show you in a minute, and that's going to allow you to get that at a really good price. And for this kind of money, you're really not going to be able to beat that kind of um, that kind of value. As you said, the storage is the same as the last one. So, you know, nice high quality 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD. We've got 16 gigs of 3600 speed RAM. Again, any brand alternative to these is absolutely fine as long as you know you're going to be getting a decent warranty with it. Video card, this is where you're going to make a real big gain here. So, you know, for approximately £120 more than our previous one with the 6500 XT, you're getting you know, a quite a significant boost in performance, at least 30% boost in performance for that extra for that extra bit of money there. 6600 is actually really underrated graphics card, really, really fast, um, especially at 1080p. It's, it actually kicks butt in things like Fortnite, getting over 250 FPS very consistently. Um, you can even play a bit of 1440p on this card as well, depending on the title. So it's a bit of a sleeper, this one. And because this is the mech version, though, so just like with the 6500 XT, the mech versions are a little bit loud. Um, but that's not because they're running hot. It's just because I don't know who did the fan curves over at MSI, but they didn't do a very good job. If you set your own fan curve in MSI Afterburner, then you're going to be having happy days with this graphics card and it will still be nice and quiet. Case. P400A yet again, lovely mesh front on this with the three RGB fans, gonna let plenty of air through the case. Nice size to be able to upgrade in the future. Got 750 watts bronze power supplied by Cooler Master. 
Again, just a fantastic power supply for this money and it's going to allow you to upgrade in the future without having to change your power supply. It's a really common thing, I see people buy, you know, the appropriate power supply for their build, but then when it comes time to upgrade, you have to change your power supply as well. So it's better to spend that extra 10 to 15 pounds now to save you having to buy a whole new power supply in the future. So I think that works out really well. On this build, again, no uh, Windows is included in the price, so you can either run it unactivated, which is fine, or you can pick up a £15 code down in the description. This one also doesn't have any Wi-Fi capability, so if you want to pick up a Wi-Fi card, I suggest something like the Gigabyte GCWB1733DI. I'll put a picture on the screen so that you're able to see it, um, but I think that's a really good um, high-quality uh, AC uh, style PCIe add-in card. So there we go, there's our £800 build, so let's move on to our next. So next up is this parts list, which is probably my favourite out of the bunch because it represents fantastic price to performance. So we're looking around 1300 quid up to 1350 depending on the day. Absolutely fantastic, true sweet spot gaming, easily 1080p, done. 1440p, done. 4K, kinda done. Depends on the game, but I could almost guarantee you're going to have a great experience with this machine. Um, in pretty much any game that you play. So let's go through the parts here. CPU i5-12600KF, right? So if you don't know, the K, the KF, all this kind of stuff, well, let's explain what it means. So K means you can overclock it if you want. It also means out of the box, it's about, yeah, it's a few percent faster as well. F means that it doesn't have any built-in graphics. Now, we don't need the built-in graphics because, of course, we're going to be using a graphics card. Um, but some people do like to have the non-F version just in case you want to do any troubleshooting or anything like that on it. Usually, it's about an extra 20 quid, 30 quid to get those uh, graphics built in on the chip. So if you want that, just get the regular K version. But to get the money down, we're going with the KF version here. They call it a 10-core processor. This is a little bit of a cop-out. It's actually a 6-core processor with a few of these small cores, these efficiency cores, bolted onto the side. So, yeah, technically a 10-core processor, but really, you should really be thinking this more like a 6-core processor with a bit of juicy extras on the side. Um, fantastic for gaming, really good single-core speed, so you're going to be getting fantastic FPS, even at 1080p when you're CPU limited. You're going to have an absolutely fantastic experience. Now we're going for the ID cooling zoom flow, 240mm cooler here. You can pick these up on Amazon, they're not listed on PC Part Picker, so I had to add it manually here. But a really nice looking cooler, I think it's the RGB looks fantastic on these. It's a bit of a sleeper, this ID cooling, this is quite a nice brand actually. I use these quite a lot and I find them very reliable. Looks great, comes with ARGB fans as well, so they all hook up, they all sync with all the other RGB in the system. Look great. And the other thing that you get with ID cooling is they send out an LGA 1700 mounting kit. Because if you don't know, the 12th gen Intels have kind of a new socket style, which means that your typical coolers don't aren't actually compatible, and you have to go out and order these extra brackets for it, and it adds extra time to the build. Whereas ID cooling in their current batch now, they are sending out coolers with the kit included. So you don't have to wait for any extra kits, or don't have to buy any extra kits. They're already included in the box, so you're gonna have a fuss-free experience. Now, motherboard-wise, Gigabyte B660 Gaming X, DDR4 version. We're not going with DDR5 because it's just not worth it currently in terms of the price. But the, the Gaming X, I think, actually looks pretty cool. Got nice sort of silver accents on it. It's got loads of M.2 slots. I think it's got three M.2 slots on it. So you can have plenty of room for extra storage if you like. It's got decent power delivery, plenty to be running this uh, 12600 KF. And I think overall, it's one of the better value B660 boards. Memory-wise, Again, same memory again, 16 gigs, two lots of eight, DDR4, 3,600 speed. That's just gonna tie in nicely with the system, but like every time, just get whatever's the cheapest that fits the same spec. So two lots of eight, 3,600, CL18 or CL16, right? Be absolutely fine. Um, you could go up to 32 gigs if you want. That would be sensible depending on the game that you're playing. Things like Warzone do like a bit more RAM. Things like Flight Simulator like a bit more RAM. Or if you're going to be doing other things like video editing on the system, yeah, bump that sucker up to 32 gig. No problem. Storage-wise, same 
uh, actual SSD, but larger capacity. So we have the Western Digital SN570. This is an NVMe SSD, so one of those nice fast SSDs. One terabyte, giving you plenty of room to store all your stuff on there. And pretty reasonably priced, around the 70 quid mark. Uh, I think this makes for a really good drive. There's no really any point going for those um, posh Gen 4 drives just yet. The games just aren't making use of that fast storage capacity, except in a few fringe cases. So for now, I'm saying stick to a nice Gen 3 like this one. Graphics card wise, the Palette GeForce RTX 3070 Gaming Pro seems to be the best value RTX 3070 that I'm able to find. I did find this price of £600 very recently, uh, and if I can find it again, I will pop it on, up on the screen so you can see it. Um, but the prices of these, they are coming down, they're getting closer to MSRP. I don't think the higher end RTX cards, so anything above the 3060 Ti, I don't think they're ever going to hit MSRP again, but they're all obviously going in the right direction. So it's not a horrible time to buy now if, if you really do want your PC. Now case wise, really nice case. So you know, in the previous examples we've been using the Fantex P400A, this is sort of in a similar vein. Um, the P400A and this one, which is the Cooler Master TD500 mesh, a couple of my favourite cases because they come with three RGB fans in the front. Really nice mesh and the internal layout is just sort of a really comfortable size. So it's not too small, so you're having to cram things in. It's not too big that it's a massive case on your desk. It just looks absolutely beautiful. One of my favourite cases, this one. Um, we've also got the Cooler Master MW Bronze V2 750 watt power supply. So it's the same power supply we've been using for all the builds, which just goes to show it's a nice power supply that's going to work and it's going to work for the lower end systems and the higher end systems. Um, really, you can get away with a 650 watt on this kind of system, absolutely no problem. It's just, it's nice to have that bit of extra breathing room bit more longevity to your parts and a bit of peace of mind as well for just a few quid more. Now again, no Wi-Fi on this one included, so just like before, pick up um, a PCIe add-in card, you'll be having happy days, same goes for your Windows code. Overall, I think this represents absolutely a bonkers value. I think this is really good. 1300 quid to get a really nice you know, mid to high end system isn't too shabby at all considering <laughs> the crap that we've had to go through GPU wise the past couple of years. So that's that one. Now our final build is one for the ballers. This is the people that really want to go all out for a really beautiful looking system with high, high performance, right? So this is going to be our RTX 3080 build with the i7. Now you might be thinking, oh yeah, it's 3090s and 3080 Ti's and whatever. But in my book, the extra that you pay for those isn't really worth worth it compared to what we've got here. So what we've got here is really great for four, even 4K gaming at decent frame rate as well. The things that you get with the 3090, for example, would be higher VRAM, so it might be good for video editing, or if you really just have a no a no budget situation where you can spend as much as you want. But I think for most people, once you start going over the 3080, you're not really getting much extra value for the amount that you're paying. So this is like a sweet spot, but super high end build nonetheless. So let's go through it. Intel i7 12700KF. We explained before the K means overclocking, the F means no integrated graphics because we don't need them. But the i7-12700KF, fantastic CPU. One of my favorites, in fact, if I was gonna say what's the best gaming CPU to get, all things considered, 12700K is gonna be the one that I choose because it's got eight core, 16 thread. It's got that really nice, super fast sort of older lake speed that you get from the 12th gen but you're not spending stupid money on the i9 that most people just aren't going to need. So really nice performance. Again, it says 12 cores, it's a little bit cheeky. It's really an eight core 16 thread processor, but with a bit of extras on the side. There's a few extra little efficiency cores sprinkled in to help with background tasks. So think of it more like an eight core CPU, but a really fast one. CPU cooler, Fractal Lumen S28. So I really like the Fractal Lumen. I just think it looks so clean. It's got lovely diffusion. It's got the RGB effects as well. So it's gonna tie in with all the other RGB in the system. Uh, 280 millimeters means it's got nice cooling capacity, decent sized radiator, which is something you're going to need for such a high end processor like this. Um, so I think this is gonna look absolutely gorgeous and I think it's gonna work great. Only problem you have with Fractal ones is you'll need to um, get in touch with their support to get the correct mounting hardware for 12th gen Intel. That's kind of the only drawback with this one, but when I did it, it was sent out and I got it within a week. So it's nothing that's gonna be too earth shattering. 
Motherboard wise, the MSI Z690A would be my pick here because the Z690s are really expensive in general. So you're not going to be getting fantastic value for money with a Z690. However, the, the thing is, with those prices being so high, actually the build quality on even the entry level Z690s is pretty nice and it, more than you need really for most people. You know, if you're a hardcore overclocker or whatever, one, you're probably not really watching this video because you already know how to pick parts for a PC, but you also, it's just doesn't make any sense for most people watching this kind of content. People want build guides, they want to know what the good stuff is. If you're an enthusiast doing loads of overclocking, you already know that. All right, so look, pipe down, sunshine. I'm going to tell you now that the Z690A is actually perfect for this CPU. Actually got decent power delivery throughout. It's well designed. MSI boards, I find them probably the most reliable out of all the boards. MSI and Asus, probably the two best board manufacturers in my opinion. Um, and the build quality you're getting for this price, not too bad at all. So that is my pick there. Memory wise, we have 32 gigabytes in total. We're going for two lots of eight, but two kits of that. So you're getting four lots of eight in total. Go for Corsair Vengeance RGB, just because it looks really nice, very clean look on the RGB. Um, that's pretty much it. Same spec as the other round that we've been using, so DDR4 3600CL18, that's going to be absolutely fine. Storage wise, another one terabyte SN570. Again, we're using Gen 3 here. You don't really need a Gen 4 drive um, for a bit of gaming. You're not going to notice any difference, at least in today's games. But that said, if you wanted to go for something posher, that's also fine. Something like a Samsung 980 Pro, usually about 40 to 50 pounds more expensive if you really want it. Now the video card, this is where it's starting to get a bit more exciting. We've got the Asus RTX 3080 Tough and it's coming in at £880, which is, yeah, there's quite a lot more than the RRP of £650, but like I've been saying before, guys, these cards, these higher end video cards, they're not going to hit RRP or MSRP before the next lot of cards come out. It's just not going to happen. But that said, there may be a little bit of room for these prices to come down. I can see them within the next couple of months going sub £800. So if that's something you want to wait for, absolutely fine. But I think for the performance you're getting, it's not actually too bad of an investment, especially compared to if you'd bought this a couple of months ago where this would have definitely been over £1,000. So prices are going in the right direction. If you can wait a bit longer, then fantastic. But this is just what's available today and it's definitely a lot better than we've had recently. Case-wise, now this is fantastic. You know we look at a lot of different cases on the channel and every time I put a build together I do like to try and use a different case just because the case is really how you express yourself in terms of how the build looks. Leon Lee Lankel 215. Now this has absolutely rave reviews everywhere and I'm totally on board with that because I love this case. It's probably on paper my favourite case because two giant 200mm fans on the front you give a massive gush of air through the case and because they're large fans they're actually a little bit quieter than the smaller fans because you know you think about moving a lot of air for a big fan to move a lot of air it doesn't have to spin as fast which means that overall um the register of the sound is lower the pitch is lower which means that it is perceived as less noisy so that's something that's really great nice mesh on the front pushing that airflow through um over all your components you've got plenty of room in this case to fit what you need so a lot of cases, ATX cases, if you try and put a liquid cooler in the roof of the case, you can't do it because you're hitting all the motherboard components. Whereas in this one, I definitely am able to fit a 280mm liquid cooler in here, unless it's something wild like the Arctic Freezer where it's got really thick rad. But I've certainly used the cooler that we've got in this list, in this case, with no problems whatsoever. And I think it's just a good looking case as well, fantastic RGB throughout. I would suggest, like we have in the parts list here, getting a single 120mm ARGB fan, chucking that in the back of the PC, then you're going to have um, RGB throughout the whole PC and it's going to look really great. But a fantastic performer, great space for all of your components, really on paper probably the best case that you're going to be able to find. Power supply, Corsair RM850, so this is the 850 watt gold rated power supply. This, again, it's just a no-brainer power supply. You buy this power supply, whatever system you're going to put it in, it's going to be fine. Um, maybe apart from a 3090 Ti, let's be honest. But 850 watt, gold rated, very nice componentry inside on these RM uh, power supplies. And you've got really long warranty, something like eight years. So you've got great confidence in a great brand that's going to deliver on the power supply, which is what you want, something nice and reliable. Now with this one, we also budgeted for some custom sleeved cabling and I like to get these from Shack Mods because 
I find that with custom cabling, you buy a kit and you get a load of cables that you don't actually want. So, for instance, when I do custom cabling, I don't bother with putting one on the CPU plug because it's such a small run of cable. It's just not worth spending that money on it. Whereas with the Shack Mods ones, you just pick up the cables that you need and they're already pre-combed on both sides. So whichever way around you put the cables, they're always going to look good. So that's why I always advocate for nice Shack Mods cabling. We need uh, two 8 pins for the tough, and we're going to need a 24 pin for the motherboard. That's all you're going to need. You can choose from all the colours there. I think they're all pretty much the same price. Um, and it's going to give you a little bit of extra sweetness on the build that's going to make it really yours. Now, of course, we don't have any Wi-Fi here, so if you need a Wi-Fi add-in card, then, of course, use the Gigabyte one that we've been talking about throughout this video. We've also got Windows 11 keys down in the description if you do need one there. And that's going to wrap us up. So on the screen now, you can see my favourite out of the builds, which is the £1,300 build. I think it's giving you the best sort of balance of money put in versus performance getting out. Um, but really, any of the builds that you pick here are going to give you good return for the money you're putting in. I just think this one is the sweetest one um, out there. So what do you guys think? Do you like this kind of video? I mean, it's something a bit different you know, on the channel. We like to put builds together, but sometimes perhaps not being so forthcoming with the uh, with the builds lists. Uh, so, yes, having fun, fun with friends. That's what the channel's all about, baby. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe, YouTube stuff. Yes, please do all that good stuff. Got a load of affiliate links in the description, especially for things like Windows keys, which do help us out if you use those links. But listen, no pressure from me. You want to buy it? Buy it. You don't want to buy it? Don't buy it. Um, also, check it, worth checking out jcpccustoms.com, especially our ready-to-go PCs. Some really nice deals in there that are actually very close to the price that you'd spend putting the build together yourself. So it's worth checking those out. But with that, I'm going to say goodbye, and thank you very much for tuning in. Concert Soup, see you later. This video is brought to you in partnership with jcpccustoms.com, purveyors of fine gaming PCs. But why buy from JCPC Customs? There are three pillars to what we do. Enthusiast grade build quality, stunning good looks that you are proud to display and all at a fair price. But how do you get your hands on one? We've got three methods. We have the ready to go PC section. These are PCs that are already built, ready to ship out with optimized specifications. So excellent for the most fuss free experience. For those that want to spec out themselves, you can use our configurator listing. And this is where you can choose some lists of parts that we have available to us. But for the most granular experience, the truly custom experience, you can use our custom spec service. And this is where you fill out our Google form. You can choose every component, even down to the model number and any other acoustic instruments that you also want with the PC can be accommodated here. So thank you very much for watching and head to jcpccustoms.com to learn more. Wait, 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 don't go anywhere just yet. Quick one, I've got a discount code for you for jcpccustoms.com. Use code YTFREE at checkout. You get free shipping on anything on the website. That includes PCs. So that's like a £30 saving right there. Anyway, on with your regularly scheduled content.